for truth, justice, and the American way. Steve Gill is on the air. Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. Appreciate your being with us and encourage you to go to our website, gillreport.com, gillreport.com, where you'll find links to the stories we're talking about. You can also go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, Steve Gill Show, where you'll find other links to the stories and have the opportunity to converse with uh, others that are commenting on and uh, sharing their thoughts on those stories. And you can always send me an email if uh, you have ideas for the show, guests you might want to hear, topics that we haven't touched upon, steve at gillreport.com, steve at gillreport.com. Now, among the many things that we have to worry about these days, you know, you've got asteroids passing close by, you've got sequester. Well, now we're finding out that we may be eating horse meat. That's right, horse meat may be being sold as beef in the United States. Taco Bell has found out that there is horse meat contained in some of the meat that they're serving in some of their European restaurants. Not sure if that's the case here as well. But this big concern over horse meat in the United Kingdom, throughout Europe, and now the U.S. Department of Agriculture saying that they're not even sure whether or not the, uh, the, the checks on meat being sold in the United States has been uh, targeted enough to figure out whether horse meat is a part of it. Now, according to the uh, Department of Agriculture, some of the checks that they do may be missing the presence of horse meat because of loopholes. And you've got some companies now that are actually uh, promoting themselves, actually advertising the fact that they check to make sure that horse meat is not contained in their, uh, in their food products. This got me to thinking, if, if we are eating horse meat, how do you know? How do you, I mean, you put enough pork barbecue sauce on it, you put uh, it into the deep fryer, would, would you actually know? If you had a taste test, would you know whether there was a little horse meat mixed into your ground beef or not? Now, I know some folks in, in other countries that don't have this uh, great affinity toward horses eat it as, as a choice. It's on the menu as horse meat, particularly in, uh, in France and places like that. If you've traveled abroad, you may have actually eaten horse meat both intentionally or unintentionally. So uh, are we facing that same consequence now in the United States? And, and part of the hysteria of the sequester is trying to get people to believe that, you know, if, if we're not going to raise taxes, we could see horse meat being served in our butcher stores, in our grocery stores, at our fast food restaurants. Just another of the ways that you're trying to create the hysteria over the uh, sequester, which uh, so far doesn't seem to have caused planes to fall from the air, children to remain uneducated or old people to starve or be subjected to having to eat cat food or, I guess worse, horse meat to survive because of the looming sequester. Uh, in event, one of the things that uh, this whole horse meat news story series uh, caused me to think is, D do Clydesdales taste like beer? Do Clydesdales taste like beer? I guess the answer would be they taste like chicken. Everything tastes like chicken. Hey, uh, speaking of hunting and eating and eating what you kill... Uh, there's a great new song that's just come out that i got to share with you. Uh, my friends Rodney Carrington and Joe Denham have come out with a great song, a, a parody of uh, that you know, multi-million selling song by Dr. Hook back in the day on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Now, Joe Denham and Rodney Carrington have a new version that is focused on on the cover of the Field and Stream. On the cover of the Field and Stream. Give a listen. I, I think you're going to like this. And if you'll go to our website, gillreport.com, you can actually uh, listen to the song pass it around, and even check out uh, sort of a temporary video that they've done to give you a little visual appeal to the song as well. They're going to be working up a full, you know, highly produced video, but they've got a temporary one up for the short term. You can find that at gillreport.com under our fun section. But uh, here's what the song sounds like. All right, Rob, this could be the one. All i got to say is field and strength. All you got to do, we'll get on the cover. Tell them who we are. All right. Well, we're big country singers, we love chicken fingers, and we get them everywhere we go. Sing about women, we sing about whiskey, $50,000 a show. We sip all kinds of shine, get to seeing things, but the thing we ain't never seen is the thing that'll hit you when you get your picture on the cover of the field and stream. Gonna go deer hunting with my brother Gonna go bass fishing with my mother I just can't wait to be On the cover of the field 
gotta love those guys. Roddy Carrington, a, a great comedian. Joe Denham, uh, a guy that's a rising star in the country comedian role. And uh, Steve Cropper. Remember, remember Steve Cropper, one of the Blues Brothers, wrote uh, the song Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, performed by uh, Otis Redding. Steve Cropper, also one of the writers of that parody song that, uh, that you just heard. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Go to our website, gillreport.com. Check out the uh, fun section and uh, you'll also see the video and be able to, uh, to pass that song along to your friends and uh, just add a little extra smile uh, during some of the things that we're having to face uh, as, uh, as sequester and horse meat and everything else, compelling us to look for a little grin from time to time. We'll be back with more of the Steve Gill Show in just a moment. As always, go to the website, gillreport.com. Go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. Collins is a value added business. We've been here since dirt almost. <laughs> and it may be the only place on earth that you can buy a Thomasville bedroom suit, a chest freezer, a riding mower, a shotgun, and a chainsaw all at the same place. 
much. We just try to make people feel welcome. You buy something here, you're going to get a good product at a good price, and we'll stand behind it. That's old-fashioned, but that's the way we are. <laughs> Hey, this is Steve Gill. What separates a truly great hotel from just another hotel? Well, it might be exquisite architecture, historic southern charm, first-class service, amazing food. You roll that all together, and you've got Union Station Hotel in downtown Nashville, an absolutely luxurious experience that you're going to remember and talk about for a long time to come. Go to their website today at unionstationhotelnashville.com or call them. Find out more details and book your reservation today at Union Station Hotel, 615-726-1001. Hi, welcome back into the show. This is the Steve Gill Show. Glad to have you with us and uh, encourage you to, as always, be part of the action. You can send your comments via email, steve at gillreport.com, steve at gillreport.com. Go to our website, gillreport.com, places for you to share your comments there. And as always, go to the Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, Steve Gill Show, where seven days a week, 24 hours a day, we're adding uh, stories and news and information so that you're always up to date. Steve Gill Show on Facebook gillreport.com on the web and uh, encourage you to be part of the show seven days a week as uh, you know we may doze but we never close some of the stories that we're talking about today include uh, the fact that Joan Rivers is under fire the uh, red carpet diva uh, made some comments about Heidi Klum's outfit at the uh, at the Oscars I mean granted Heidi Klum is gorgeous she's a model she's German she was wearing this beautiful gold tight fitting dress and uh, Joan Rivers uh, made the comment that the last time a German looked this hot was when they were pushing Jews into ovens. The last time a German looked this hot was when they were pushing Jews into ovens. Uh, Joan Rivers, uh, uh, other commentators on the E! Network, thought this was hilarious. They were just laughing like crazy because nothing's funnier than killing six million people under the leadership of the Nazis. Uh, now, Joan Rivers says, well, look, my... My uh, family is Jewish. I'm Jewish. You know, I can make Jewish jokes. I guess it's the same thing why black commentators can throw around the N-word, and uh, they can do that, and it's acceptable. But if anybody else does, they you know, are condemned and punished for the rest of their lives. Um, Anti-Semitism, whether it is dispensed under the guise of, of a Jewish comedian or a skinhead, ought to be completely untolerated in this country. It is disgusting, and the fact that Joan Rivers not only made the comments, but now is refusing to back off, I think speaks volumes about her and and the Hollywood mentality that uh, is seeing the rise of anti-Semitism in the world that is leading to violence against Jews, leading to violence uh, in places like Israel and uh, and around the world. They don't see the connection, and uh, those of us who do need to speak out loudly and, and condemn it. You know, a few years ago, Roseanne Barr, dressed as Hitler, baking burnt Jew cookies. You have to actually see this picture to understand how vile it is. Roseanne Barr, not condemned by Hollywood, not basically booted out of Hollywood, blacklisted forever. She poses dressed as Hitler, putting Jew cookies in an oven. And the Hollywood left thinks, that's just, that's a knee slapper. That's just funny. If you go to our website, gillreport.com, you can find the link and actually check out the Roseanne Barr photo for yourself. And let us know what you think. Is is this just good fun, or is it the kind of thing that no civilized person should tolerate? And uh, again, you know, you've got folks that make a joke in Hollywood. If they're a conservative, they are they're attacked by the uh, the media giants. But if one of their own says something that is uh, absolutely intolerable, that's ah, it's just a joke. It's just funny. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, some of the other stories: uh, the the new Bible series is going to be kicking off this weekend on the History Channel. I'm excited about this. It's a, it's a 10-part series. It's, it's apparently going to be very well produced by uh, the guy that came up with Survivor, Mark Burnett, his wife, Roma Downey, who was an, an actress in the old Touched by an Angel series. They put together a series that's going to devote five segments to the Old Testament, five segments to the New Testament. It uh, starts airing on Sunday, March 3rd. It's going to air for uh, for the next several weeks and uh, encourage you to set the DVR, tune it in, in part because Christians really need to step up and support the kind of programming that that is going to enhance and 
bring us up rather than, than bring this nation down, sort of the cultural devolution of what we see on television, whether it's Jersey Shore, whether it's Honey Boo Boo, whether it's some of these uh, disgusting shows on television that seem to uh, promote the subculture rather than promote the, the best of who we can be. We have to step up and support these things. So I encourage you to spread the word to your friends and neighbors to tune in, to watch this show, to spread the word about this uh, Bible series on on the History Channel, much the same way folks stood in line to support Chick-fil-A. Christians need to step up and support programming that promotes positive values, that promotes Christianity in a positive light, uh, rather than the sort of negative portrayals that we usually get from Hollywood and, uh, and the television networks. So uh, spread the word. Go to the website, guildreport.com. You can find out more about this series. Also, uh, Mark Survivor Burnett and his wife did a, a great uh, column in the Wall Street Journal on why public schools should teach the Bible. Why public schools should teach the Bible uh, in the Wall Street Journal. Again, Mark Burnett, one of the great masters of Hollywood out there uh, doing this. And uh, again, it shows that there may be some hope even in Hollywood. But uh, you can find out more about that and the, uh, the column that uh, he and his wife have written, Why Public Schools Should Teach the Bible at GillReport.com. Another little uh, indication of good news in the uh, media world, Duck Dynasty. Have you watched Duck Dynasty? I love this show. Duck Dynasty draws 8.6 million viewers to its uh, first episode this season. 8.6 million people tuning into Duck Dynasty. Now, by comparison, you know, Piers Morgan and CNN, they draw about 400,000 viewers. So, Duck Dynasty scores about 8 million more viewers than the best CNN and MSNBC have to offer, just, just to put it in perspective. So uh, Duck Dynasty returning to television uh, with a new season with a bang, no, no pun intended. Uh, Duck Dynasty is now the biggest reality show telecast so far in 2013. And again, to put it in perspective, you have American Idol that is now down to about 13 million viewers. Duck Dynasty not on a major network, is pulling 8.6 million viewers. Just, just a good comparison of if you put stuff on television that people want to watch, they'll find it even if it's not on those major networks. So uh, if you're not a, a Duck Dynasty fan yet, I encourage you to start tuning in. It's, it's not quite as good as the Bible series on the History Channel, um, but they do have long hair and walk around barefoot a lot. So I guess they're kind of a modern version of the apostles in some ways. I don't think Jesus and the apostles actually ever went duck hunting, though. So, anyway, check out Duck Dynasty, 8.6 million viewers. And, uh, again, just another indication that uh, America may be a lot more uh, supportive of guns and folks who use guns than the left-wing media and the uh, Obama administration would uh, actually want us to know. Also, uh, when you uh, go to the website, gillreport.com, gillreport.com, You'll find uh, some details about the new NFL Combine. They're apparently asking some tough questions of some of the potential NFL superstars that uh, some people feel are a little bit out of bounds. Like, well, do you like girls? All this is really a a part and parcel of the Manti Teo scandal of dating the girlfriend who didn't exist, and questions have arisen as to whether Manti Teo is gay or not. I don't think that really matters. I think the real question is, does your girlfriend or boyfriend really exist or not? Are you... Are you dating a fiction? Can you tell the difference in fiction and reality? That should be a legitimate question, whether they're dating men or women, like boys or girls. Not sure that's as relevant to an NFL career as uh, whether they've got some touch with reality. Anyway, you can find more details about that at uh, gillreport.com. I do want to say congratulations to Holly Wark and the Tennessee Lady Vols winning the uh, regular season SEC championship. Holly is uh, doing a great job stepping in as the uh, the head coach for the University of Tennessee Lady Balls. Big, big shoes to fill. It is almost impossible for somebody to, to follow a legend, whether it's in football or basketball, and Holly is doing a great job of it. So congratulations to Holly Warlick and the Lady Balls. We'll talk more in a moment. I'm Steve Gill. This is the Steve Gill Show, and we're back in just a few minutes.
This Get a Job moment is brought to you by StreetLogic101.com. This is Ed Burrell. Have you sent out what seems like a thousand job applications but haven't heard back from anyone? Are you discouraged and fear you may never find a job in this horrible job market? Prepare yourself for a successful job search. Get the most comprehensive jobs guide available in paperback called Beating the Gatekeepers. It's available at StreetLogic101.com. Companies will begin hiring again in the new year, and you need to learn how to move from disappointment to employment. That's StreetLogic101.com. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. Wounded Warrior Project was created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war, whether those scars are physical or mental. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Every dollar counts these days, and at AH Reloading, they help you get a bigger bang for your buck with all the shooting, hunting, and reloading supplies you need and at the prices you'll love. Looking for brass powder and reloading presses? They have it all at AH Reloading Supply, located at 1134 4th Avenue South in downtown Nashville on the corner of 4th and Chestnut. Open Wednesday through Friday, 10 to 5, Saturday, 10 to 2. Call AH Reloading today, 615-218-1975. 615-218-1975 or online at ahreloading.com. Welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. Glad to have you with us and uh, be a part of the action. Go to the website, gillreport.com, gillreport.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, and check in on the stories that we're talking about. Have you felt that chill in the air? I mean, it's been cold this week and into this weekend. You know, when you turn the calendar to March, I'm ready for some warm. I'm ready for spring to at least start pretending to be here, and yet it seems like March is starting off colder than uh, we saw most of January and February. Yeah, you saw a snowfall in Tucson. They had a golf tournament out there that they had to you know, basically cancel because of three, four, five inches of snow in the valley in Tucson. Not something that they're normally accustomed to. That's why they schedule golf tournaments there. And I wonder if the liberal Birkenstock-wearing hippy-dippies out in uh, Tucson, as they stood in four inches of snow, started to question that whole global warming thing that Al Gore has made so much money propagandizing about over the years. And then you've got this uh, story from from Britain that uh, in the United uh, Kingdom's Daily Mail, so much for global warming, four out of the last five winters in Britain have been colder than average. Four out of the last five winters have been colder in Britain than the average temperatures you would expect. So whether it's snow in Tucson, whether it's the brutal cold that uh, we're experiencing uh, in Tennessee, whether it's the colder temperatures in Britain, this global warming thing is being discounted by anybody and everybody who actually looks at the facts and figures. And yet you've got this group that still tends to worship at the, uh, at the altar of global warming and have no intentions of letting the, the facts get in the way of their beliefs. Uh, I guess that's just uh, part and parcel of what it takes to be a liberal. You've got to believe in the unbelievable. Like the fact that this sequester is going to be devastating to America because they're going to cut $85 billion dollars out of a one, out of a three point five trillion dollar budget, about two to three percent, two to three percent is going to cause devastation. American families have cut a lot more than two to three percent from their budgets in the last few years. Uh, businesses have laid off employees, have had to do more serious cutbacks than the federal government is facing, and yet the hysteria coming out of the media, the hysteria coming out of Washington over the sequester, is nothing more than crazy. Uh, Speaking of those that uh, may be cutting back even more, NBC and the Today Show are still having to deal with with ratings that are heading south, heading downward, and they keep moving people around but not uh, changing the results. Now, the uh, Today Show, some are joking, have fallen harder than Jennifer Lawrence on Oscar night. And the former number one show has now slipped into third place in New York and nationally. So what do they do to change it? Do they keep doing the same thing but with different people? Or do they actually make some changes in what they're doing? My guess, 
they'll keep doing exactly what they've been doing because they're not going to let the facts get in the way of their propaganda agenda. What they're trying to do, whether it's from Hollywood, whether it's on the networks, whether it's in the morning shows, is push an agenda. And the American people are turning the channel to try to find something that will actually be honest, try to be credible, and that's why you're seeing these shows continue to head south. And uh, they're not going to let, let that reality contradict what they're actually trying to do. It's sort of like Maxine Waters. Warning, 170 million jobs could be lost due to the sequestration cuts. 170 million jobs. Now, Maxine Waters is a Democrat member of Congress who is trying to spread the hysteria about the disaster of the sequestration. 170 million jobs could be lost due to these dire cuts, according to Maxine Waters. Now, keep in mind, there are only 134 million people actually working in the United States. Now, I'm not making this up. Here's what Maxine Waters had to say as she jumps on the let's scare the bejeebers out of the American people bandwagon. I find that uh, we appear to be coming to this room more and more as women as uh, you lead us in addressing uh, many of the issues that are arising uh, in this Congress uh, and our need to push back on the negative impact of much of what is being done uh, by our friends on the opposite side of the aisle. Yesterday we did have uh, Mr. Bernanke uh, in our committee, and he came to tell us uh, what he's doing with quantitative easing, and that is trying to stimulate the economy with the bond purchases that he's been doing because he's trying to keep the interest rates low and create jobs. And he said that if sequestration takes place, that's going to be a great setback. We don't need uh, to be um, having something like sequestration that's going to um, cause these job losses over 100 and, and 70 million jobs that could be lost. And so he made it very clear. He's not opposed to cuts, but cuts must be done over a long period of time and in a very planned way rather than this blunt cutting that will be done by sequestration. Uh, as you know, in this committee, we have all of HUD. And HUD is responsible for so many programs that determine the quality of life for women and families. CDBG, our formula grant programs, will be cut by $153 million. These are grants to cities that help with women and children and um, uh, low-income programs. We also will cut the home program by um, $52 million if sequestration takes place. Native American housing grant by $34 million. Housing choice grants by $113 uh, million. Public housing, mostly single women in public housing, another $304 million. And homelessness. Everybody claims to be concerned about homelessness and the growing number of women and children who are out there homeless. But look, they will take a $99 million hit and on and on and on. And so we are here today uh, one more time talking about women and children and families and how we can protect uh, our women, children, and families and have a decent quality of life. Sequestration will set us back. All of the gains that we have made will be lost with sequestration. Again, you ask why people are turning the dial, tuning out the mainstream networks that don't even criticize or question the, the crazy talk from people like Maxine Waters, people know this stuff isn't true. They know that the sequestration fear talk, the boogeyman under your bed talk we're getting from President Obama and others is not true. And they're increasingly trying to seek out the truth wherever they have to go to find it. That's why you're seeing the Internet, why you're seeing alternative news media like, uh, like The Blaze, like Breitbart.com, uh, like WNOX, like GillReport.com. There are other sources where people can get the truth. And as long as they're out there, the administration has to face silencing opposition, quieting those who would spread the truth because they can't win the battle. They can't fight intellectually. On a, on a level playing field where both sides make their case and the American people decide. They have to silence the voices they don't like. And that's why you're seeing so much of an assault on Fox News, on conservative talk radio, on conservative leaders, whether it's you know the folks like Alan West, whether it's the Michelle Bachmans, 
You know, that's why they're under fire, Sarah Palin and others, because they can't allow the truth to be told. Because if the American people hear the truth, they won't buy the baloney that's being dispensed by this administration. We'll talk more about it in the next segment. If you want to join us, go to GillReport.com, go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, and you can weigh in. And uh, as always, send me an email, Steve at GillReport.com. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, this is Steve Gill for my friends with Pilot Travel Centers. Whether you're a professional driver, a business traveler, or a family on vacation, you know that Pilot Travel Centers are your one-stop spot for convenience. Fill up your vehicle, grab a bite to eat in one of their quick-service restaurants, stock up on your favorite road trip supplies, all in an environment that is fast, friendly, and clean. They're also featuring the best coffee on the interstate. Now Pilot has teamed up with Flying J to become an even bigger and better friend on the roadways. Across Tennessee, across the nation, Tennessee-owned and Tennessee-focused, Pilot gets you there wherever you're headed. If you've never been in our store, I promise you it'll be different than anywhere else you've ever been. We carry a wide variety of the best furniture brands and appliance brands in the industry. We've got several of us McCall's doing the buying. We've got so many brands I couldn't even name them all. But we try to give an upfront price that we think is fair. So we have a lot to offer. If you haven't been in our store in the past five to ten years, you're going to be amazed at all the things that we're doing. Take my hand and start a brand new day And together as one we'll start to see some change Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. I mentioned earlier, uh, congratulations to Holly Warlick and the Lady Vols for winning the regular season basketball uh, championship in the Southeastern Conference. And all the best to them as they roll into the tournament, as they roll into the uh, to the big March dance. Holly Warlick has, has done a great job, and uh, she is a true uh, daughter of Knoxville and one that uh, we can be very proud of, having to step into very huge shoes following Pat Summit. Now, Coach Pat Summit has a new book out, Sum It Up that uh, I think will be a great uh, story of not only how she has persevered and overcome some of the, the stories of, uh, of her life that haven't been, been told before, and uh, encourage you to pick up a copy of Sum It Up. I had the, uh, the opportunity when I was uh, at the University of Tennessee after my playing days on the men's team came to a conclusion to uh, actually help uh, run the men's practice team against the Lady Balls and work with Coach Summit and, and her staff at that time, and uh, it, was, it was a great experience. I've often told folks that, thank goodness, I played for the men's team because I'm not sure I was man enough to play for Pat and, uh, and her team, but it was a great opportunity to, to see Coach Summit in action and to learn a lot of lessons that uh, apply far off the basketball court, and uh, I have long been and remain a, a huge fan of, uh, of Coach Summit and am uh, thrilled to see that uh, the success platform she's built being carried on by Holly Warlick and the, uh, and the Lady Vols. So uh, congratulations to them and congratulations to uh, Pat Summit on her new book and encourage uh, folks to go pick it up. And, and not only because it's a great story, but also to show support for, for Pat Summit and the, the whole Summit family, which is extended well beyond the biological family to all those players and teams and fans that have, uh, that have been a part of her life for so long. So I uh, encourage you to go pick up the book. I think it's going to be a great read. Speaking of shooting, Speaking of shooting, and we're talking in a basketball sense, I, I got to bring up once again Joe Biden, the master of uh, of delusion when it comes to the Second Amendment. Uh, Joe Biden is now suggesting that people fire a shotgun through the door 
if they feel threatened, if they feel like there's danger to them or their family. Now, you know, that'll get you arrested, as uh, one guy recently found out. He followed the advice of President Joe Biden. There were people lurking around outside. He fired through the door. The police arrived and arrested him. Yeah, that's kind of dangerous. Sort of like firing your weapon into the air randomly, because those pellets, those bullets do come down, and that's sort of reckless. It's sort of dangerous. The vice president last week was suggesting that uh, his advice to his wife in terms of risk or harm, and again, I'm not sure how much risk or harm she'd be facing considering the fact that Joe Biden and his wife live in the vice president's mansion and they're surrounded by security details and guards and fences. In any event, uh, Joe was concerned that his wife might sometime be confronted with danger and suggested that she take a double-barreled shotgun and fire two shots into the air. Now, of course, anybody that can do basic math knows that if you've got a double-barreled shotgun and you fire two shots into the air, you've just fired all of your shots. You are now defending yourself with what amounts to a club rather than a shotgun. Here's Joe Biden giving his advice on how to handle a threat with your double-barreled shotgun by shooting into the air. We live in an area that's wooded and somewhat secluded. I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not going to, you don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. Buy a shotgun. Now, putting aside for a moment the fact that perhaps he's just warning us of the danger of low-flying drones, you know, those drones that Barack Obama and the Obama administration apparently intend to use to kill Americans, maybe he's suggesting that that's how you take out the drones. Just fire into the air at random and hope you bring down one or two. But worse than that is the idea that Joe Biden clearly doesn't know anything about guns. Two shots from a double-barrel shotgun, you use all your ammunition. Uh... Just another reason not to listen to Joe Biden when it comes to guns, the economy, or frankly, anything else. But uh, Joe Biden, once again, giving the kind of nonsense advice that we have come to expect from the Vice President of the United States. Go to our website, gillreport.com. You can actually watch that video. I encourage you to share it with your friends. A lot of folks have been talking about the video and haven't mentioned the two-shot aspect of the double-barreled shotgun and the fact that he's basically encouraging his wife to waste all her ammunition and then let the bad guys have their way with her. Maybe he just doesn't like his wife that much. Anyway, go to the website, gillreport.com, gillreport.com, and uh, you'll find that story and others linked up. Also go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show, and you can find the details there. And also how folks that are following the advice of the vice president are uh, apparently putting themselves at risk by uh, firing shots through the door that leads to your arrest. Also not great if you're a pizza delivery guy, if people start following that advice you knock on the door to deliver Domino's pizza. Next thing you know, you got shotgun blasts coming through the door. Now, in some neighborhoods, that might be more likely than others. But, uh, again, following the advice of the vice president, likely to end up with you sending, uh, spending some time in jail. Now, again, putting aside the math that a double-barreled shotgun has two shots, and Joe's instructed his wife to fire both of them into the air, the bottom line is you're now having to reload rather than defend yourself. Now, I was talking to my own dad a while back about the fact that he had heard a news story that claimed that one of the best defensive weapons you have at your home is that ch -ch -ch of a shotgun being racked. And my dad pointed out that he's recently purchased one of those Benelli tactical assault shotguns that doesn't rack. You just got five really good shotgun blasts coming one after another. And my dad was curious about how, how you protect yourself and, and use that kind of warning sound if you don't have the shotgun to rack. Now, I told my dad, just make that really loud sound yourself, just before you blow these guys away. And it got me to thinking about how to follow Joe Biden's advice. If, for example, you're armed with one of these Benelli tactical shotguns, semi-automatic forms, that really give you a lot more shots than the bad guys may think you have. I mean, think about this for a moment. If all the bad guys who wish to do us and our families harm are thinking we're following Joe Biden's crackpot advice of firing two shots with our double-barreled shotguns into the air as they come lurking in our yards and prepare to rush our homes, the idea that, that might work is to assume they're listening to the crazy vice president. So if you're feeling concerned, if you walk out onto the front porch of your home and 
you think somebody's lurking out in the bushes waiting to attack you, fire those two shots in the air. Lure them in. And when they think you're out, they won't know you've got three more shots that you can fire off quickly, leaving gaping, chest-sucking holes in their chest because they think you're following the crackpot advice of the vice president. Now, the vice president wasn't through when he was advising people to fire a couple of shots into the air. No, he had more advice as he met with Field and Stream and did an interview with them and advised people to just simply shoot through the door of their home if they thought somebody was outside meaning to do them harm. No, seriously, he advises shooting through your door into the outside. Now, I'm thinking that Domino's Pizza delivery guys aren't going to be responding to pizza calls from the vice president's home anytime soon. I mean, you knock on the door, next thing you do, you've got uh, two shots blasting through the door, taking out the pizza delivery man. But more importantly, there's a guy in Virginia who just got prosecuted for doing the exact thing the vice president has advised. If you go to our website, gillreport.com, you can find that story. That's right. Every single bit of gun advice that Joe Biden is giving you will actually get you arrested. Firing into the air, that's illegal, particularly if there's no good reason to do so, like, well, shooting down one of those drones. And firing through the door, well, as, as I mentioned, there's, uh, there's actually a guy who's facing prosecution for doing exactly that. Yeah, he, he heard some folks outside, was worried that they might be threatening harm, you know, looked out the window, wasn't sure what was going on, so he fired a couple of quick blasts through the door. Now, presumably, they went away. Unfortunately, the cops came, and now he's being prosecuted for doing what the vice president has suggested. Again, go to our website, gillreport.com. Go to our Facebook page, Steve Gill Show. You can find links to those and other stories. And I'm telling you, when it comes to gun advice, listen to anybody. Listen to everybody before you get to Joe Biden. We're back in a moment. This is the Steve Gill Show, the weekend edition. <laughs> 